Thank, thank you very much, Yuri. Can everyone hear me okay? <clears throat> if you're expecting um, uh, Edwin Brennickmeyer, I'm afraid he's not here this afternoon, so you've got me instead. Um, I spent my career in aviation services. I've been doing some work with Orion's Aviation as a, as a consultant over the last few years. Helped Orion's um, set up their Pilates Center at Biggin Hill. I've helped them set up their uh, maintenance center also at Biggin Hill. I wouldn't claim I'm an expert on the PC-12, so please don't ask me too many difficult questions. But hopefully I can take you satisfactorily through the, uh, the presentation that Edwin has put together. So, here we go. So, um, evolution through innovative design. Um, PC-12 is a... You know, it's, in, in terms of business aviation, it's rather different. It, it doesn't exactly fit the mould of a... A bit closer? Sorry. It doesn't exactly fit the mould of a of what I would call a, a standard business aircraft. It's very different. If you go back to the roots of the PC-12, um, it's easy to understand why it ended up being the, uh, the aircraft that it is. First of all... Um, the original design was focused on a on the market design market demand for a very much a utilitarian aircraft. So uh, at the time, I mean, back in the mid 1980s, Pilatus, very small aviation company by global terms, um, just manufacturing the PC6, the the turbo porter. I'm sure you've seen pictures of the PC6 landing in the middle of the jungle, landing on glaciers. And they were also manufacturing the PC-7 and the PC-9 military trainer. But they recognized there was an opportunity in the marketplace to develop a, a rugged, durable, utilitarian aircraft, something that carried large payloads, something that would operate off of uh, short, rough strips, daytime and, in night, and, and at night, uh, something that had long range, high altitude, flight high altitude, pressurized cabin, low fuel consumption and fast, low operating costs, and also single pilot IFR. You pour those things together, there was clearly nothing in the world at that time that was delivering that sort of capability. Um, and the PC-12 was born. It first flew in 1991. The first aircraft was delivered to the Royal Flying Doctor Service of Australia in 1994. Um, and that was the birth of something that has gone from strength to strength ever since. So in terms of design, um, some of the f innovative design features that feature in the PC-12, first of all, I I'm sure there's quite a lot of people in the room that are familiar with the PC-12, the large cargo door. Um, I can't really think of another business aircraft certainly in this sort of category that features a large cargo door in the same way that the PC-12 cargo door is there. Uh, it's large enough for a, a pallet. Um, the picture on the left, Royal Flying Doctor Service PC-12, patient transfer, um, obviously very easy access. And it's also got this high tail and a straight trailing edge of the wing which allows the vehicles to move up to the, the rear of the cargo area really well. The other things that were important in the original design, it had a, it's got a very tough undercarriage capable of landing off these rough strips, short rough strips. It's got low pressure tires. Um, and it's also got this significant array of external lighting. Um, I don't know if you can see here, but there's, there's four very large lights under the wing, and there's also a taxi light on the, on the nose wheel. Um, if you see a PC-12 coming down the final approach at night, you think it's a you know, a Gulfstream or a, or a Global or something, but it's actually a PC-12, <laughs> an incredible light. And, and that was developed, again, for part of the design features for landing on rough strips in the middle of nowhere at night when there was very poor um, runway lighting. So um, today, the Royal Flying Doctor Service, the launch customer, as I said, 34 aircraft in their fleet. Um, it's just about half of the Royal Flying Doctor Service fleet. They transfer about some incredible number. I think it's 16,000 patients a year have flown around Australia by the Royal Flying Do Doctor Service. And I think it's 8 million kilometres of area that the Royal Flying Doctors um, Service actually cover. Um, and PC-12 is, 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 is very much uh, at the forefront of their fleet. So when the aircraft first went into service... Um, 
1994, um, it, it wasn't long before, I think it was the American distributors were coming forward saying to Pilatus, look, you know, you've, you've got a really, really good opportunity here to create something special in the executive market. Pilatus weren't really thinking along those lines at the time. Um, but you know, clearly with what they developed for this utility market, it was also going to be a significant success in the executive market. So, I mean, I, I think, you know, hopefully lots of you have experienced the PC-12, but, you know, the cabin, you know, single-engined aircraft, people don't really realize the scale of a PC-12, but cabin volume greater than most turboprops and mid-sized jets. You've got easy access to baggage. You've got the large cargo door at the back. Very easy access to that baggage when you're flying. Uh, it's got a lavatory, and again, single engine turboprop. Most people don't recognize that it's got a lavatory. It's got a flat floor, a uh, feature of a lot of larger business jets, and it's also easily reconfigurable. Um, these um, five different or six different configurations there's an executive six seat, executive six plus two, which is the, the configuration that. Uh, Oops, someone's got a microphone on. Um, the 6 plus 2 configuration seems to be the, 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 the most popular configuration the in terms of the glasses. executive market. <laughs> Hopefully it's not my phone. Um, but we've got these other configurations as well. On the, on the right, there is a, a combi configuration. That's meant to be a motorcycle in the back. And certainly, you know, with... Is everything okay? <laughs> Certainly with Orion's, we've, we've seen some very um, different loads being com um, transported by PC-12. And on the right-hand side, we've got the, the Medifac configuration that uh, the Royal Flying Doctor Service and many other air ambulance operators use around the world. And there's a couple of shots of the interior of a PC-12 in its sort of utilitarian guise, the Medivac on the left and the, um, a fairly utilitarian sort of nine-passenger nine configuration on the right. So in terms of design evolution, um, as I said, introduced into service in, two, in 1994. In 2008, there was a, a major upgrade. The, the PC-12NG was introduced. It featured a, a new interior designed by BMW Design Works. It featured a very much a state-of-the-art avionics system, the Prime Primus Epic, Ep, Apex rather, which was developed from the Epic. Um, engine was upgraded, 1200 shaft, shaft horsepower, Pratt & Whitney PD6A-67. And the whole of the electrical system was upgraded as well to provide much higher levels of, of redundancy. So, and then again, um, in 2016, the aircraft was upgraded again. Um, it then featured the five-blade composite propeller. That took the cruising speed up to 285 knots. Um, the composite propeller also provided a significant step change in terms of cabin noise levels. Uh, and there were many updated interior design features and also a load of aerodynamic upgrades as well, which reduced the drag on the aircraft and helped the speed um, increase. There is, the, uh, there is the Honeywell avionics suite. Um, one of the things that I'm sure Edwin would t have told you all about, but I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a pilot and I'm not about to tell you about the sophistication of this avionics system, but one thing I've always found absolutely amazing is if you were to have an emergency in this aircraft, let, let's just pretend that we're cruising along at 30,000 foot, it's the middle of the night, the weather on the ground is absolutely awful, and there's some sort of emergency and we've got to get the aircraft on the ground quickly. And it's a single pilot operation. They're pretty difficult circumstances. Um, this uh, avionics system has the ability for the pilot to actually call up a, press a number of buttons, um, call up a screen which will show all the airfields, IFR airfields and VFR airfields that were in, are, are within you know, range of the aircraft, depending on how much fuel it's got available and everything else. And then the combination of the, um, the avionics, the autopilot, and the smart view synthetic vision can actually take the aircraft to 50 foot above the threshold of an, air, of an airfield, a VFR airfield at that. So if you've got a thick fog on the ground, 
the aircraft will deliver you to 50 foot above the threshold of that aircraft of that airfield, which I think is you know is absolutely amazing. And you know I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that don't um, understand perhaps the capability of the aircraft in that respect. So highly highly advanced avionics system. The interior, as I say, was upgraded as well. I'm sure you'll already agree. You'll you'll all agree that that's a, a pretty nice looking interior. Um, it's lovely to fly in. Um, it's a great interior, and uh, you know, again, for a single engine turboprop, it, it's quite special. So, over the over since 1994, the aircraft has become uh, the world's best selling business turboprop. Uh, it's been in production now for more than 20 years. It's nearly achieved 7 million flying hours, actually. Um, it's certainly w well up there in, this, in the high 6 millions. Um, and one of the, one of the other outstanding um, uh, features of the aircraft, which is testament to the design of the aircraft, the quality of the aircraft, the demand for the aircraft, is that the residual value tends to be much, much higher than a lot of aircraft it competes against. So this data here on the right is showing that the, the value of a PC-12, the average value after 10 years, is 78% of the purchase price. And if you compare that, the other aircraft that are shown on this particular graph, uh, CJ-2+, Plus, Mustang, CJ-1, M2, Phenom 100, and typically their residual value after 10 years is between sort of 50 and 60%. So it's quite incredible that the PC-12 can hold its value so well. And that's obviously very attractive to the people that have bought the aircraft. And it's a good reason why the aircraft continues to sell so well. For 15 consecutive years, uh, Pilatus Service has been voted number one in the business turboprop market in the USA. And Pilatus are very proud of that. And it's also got a safety record on a par with professionally crewed twin-engine business jets. Again, which is which is quite astounding, really, when you think that the PC-12 is predominantly flown by uh, not professional crew, and it's also flown single pilot a lot of the time. It's been uh, approved by EASA for single engine turboprop operations, commercial operations, which I'm sure you're already aware of. And you know, one of the reasons the PC-12 has performed so well. Um, has been down to the Pratt Whitney Canada PT6A engine, which is absolutely astounding engine um, in terms of reliability and performance. So, um, PC12, it's it's got to be you know one of the most innovative uh, and versatile aircraft ever designed, certainly in my opinion. And one of the things that we find within Orion's is the people that buy it really do get more out of life. They use it for so many things. They usually purchase the aircraft for business purposes, but then we find them flying around Europe, you know, every weekend with their families. There's mountain bikes in the back, there's canoes in the back, there's surfboards in the back. You know, there's not many aircraft that you can take off from London with your family and arrive at Cor Cheval at the Altiport, you know, two, two and a half hours later and literally get out of the aircraft and be on the ski slopes. And from that point of view, you know, the design of the PC-12 is, is absolutely, you know, I, I think it's absolutely amazing. Um, so, highly versatile aircraft. Can you hear me all right? Um, uh, but perhaps not the most versatile, versatile aircraft. Perhaps the PC-12 is going to, PC-24 is going to eclipse the PC-12 when it comes along. In fact, it's here. I think the first four or five aircraft have been delivered. I think Avia Pages have had experience of one already by the looking at the, uh, the video at the beginning. Um, and there's a picture of the PC-24 going through its rough airfield trials, um, I think, earlier this year in uh, RAF Woodbridge in Suffolk in, in the UK. Um, it's going to be another fantastic aircraft, similar sort of features to the PC-12 in terms of large cargo door, rough field capability. Not surprisingly, the Royal Flying Doctor Service have already ordered a number of aircraft. So I think the business aviation world is also very, very excited about the PC-24, and hopefully it's going to be another sort of same design type success as the PC-12. So now I think we've got a quick video to watch, which will um, hopefully demonstrate the design features of the PC-12 and why those design features have made it such a versatile aircraft.
So thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, David. Thank you. Um, before that, uh, before the video, I don't want to ask if you have a short question to David, maybe to, to yeah, not, not too difficult, hopefully. Ask. Okay. Any, any questions? Any questions? Go on then. Just one sec. Yeah. yeah welcome. Uh, um, yeah, you know, you were saying the PC12 is very versatile. It can actually carry a landing gear of an A320. I'm seeing David Blue Blueline somewhere. Um, I thought that's quite an interesting observation. And also, it can be used for crews. Um, if an aeroplane is um, the crews are late, um, airline operators can quickly be moved around. So there could actually be an audience, potentially, for airlines to just move their crew around and for parts, etc. So it is very versatile. And, and I, I do work with Orion's as well. <laughs> <laughs> and Orion's actually have been approached by a number of airlines actually looking at the uh, PC-12. Uh, a number of other aircraft manufacturers as well looking at the PC-12, thinking that it would be great in terms of uh, AOG support, you know, because of the cargo door, because of its versatility. Of course, the short runway performance allows... Um, you know, airlines or OEMs to get closer to, you know, wherever the problem is. So yeah, oh, Perhaps you need to think about new business model, combining private jet and then to change to the landing gear. But <laughs> I mean, no, but that's absolutely interesting guys' idea. Uh, thank you very much, David. It's been a pleasure.